Travis Wayne Goodsell here. Uh, it's uh, thanks to you Mormons who are faithful and true uh, to the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that are responsible for its destruction. And you're going, no, Travis, wrong, thumbs down, thumbs down. Yeah. And as you are doing that, that's why. Uh, it's your uh, refusal or denial uh, to search for truth, to come unto the true Jesus that uh, causes this. Uh, as uh, the news is just uh, bombarded here in Utah and Idaho with the case there, uh, and Arizona, and anywhere where there's a Mormon. Uh, you've got uh, adoption, kidnapping, uh, child uh, rape, uh, and child abduction, murder, uh, all involving Mormons in the news lately. Uh, you guys are not following your gospel, yet you claim to be faithful Mormons. You are devout, you tell everybody, oh, the Church of Jesus Christ is the only true church on the face of the earth, and, and the Book of Mormon is the greatest ever, and we have a true prophet leading and guiding the church. You know, I was Mormon, I am still, haven't officially resigned. Uh, my uh, continuation as a Mormon uh, has the... Uh, causes the church to commit insurance fraud, which is another example of how you guys are destroying the church. Uh, by uh, not removing your names, uh, those of us are purposely doing it to cause the church to uh, commit insurance fraud, but uh, those of you who are faithful uh, you're giving protection money to the church through tithing. You're participating in their pyramid scam business called recruitment. It's not called recruitment, but that's what it is. It's recruitment, uh, which is the missionary work. Every time you uh, get somebody to read the Book of Mormon and, and take the lessons from the missionaries and and they decide to join the church and get baptized and pay tithing. Pyramid scheme. Uh, Utah doesn't recognize it because pyramid schemes are allowed to exist in Utah. Don't they, USANA Amphitheater? And doTERRA. And many others. I shot one down here in Utah. Um... <clears throat> uh, this Sunday you're going to have your fast and testimony Super Bowl Sunday meeting uh, where you're going to get up and you're going to lie about the church you're going to say how grateful you are which is not a testimony uh, and you're going to cry and oh if it wasn't for the church I wouldn't be where I am today well yeah I've <laughs> that's the problem You'd be in a lot better shape if the church weren't around and uh, raising us. I wouldn't be where I am if I wasn't born and raised in the church. I'd be in a different situation. If Joseph Smith drew the church, or if... <laughs> I get caught up in the word twist. If Joseph Smith's church was still in existence and wasn't murdered, uh, uh, we wouldn't have the Brighamite church. And, uh, and so things would be a lot different in America. <coughs> but there's also some others who deserve lots and lots of credit. Uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, uh, those who have already done it well, it's contemporary with me. 
and those who have, uh, have caused me to uh, do this lawsuit against the church, of which I've won, if you've not been watching my other videos, uh, I will uh, be going in on uh, Monday because uh, only corrupt judges refuse to wait until the last minute or skip altogether. So only good judges get things done as speedy, speedily as possible. But uh, I've got the federal rules on um, how to proceed when judges are corrupt. And so that will be taken care of Monday. Uh, but I've already won. So it's just a matter of time. But I'll get to those that list of you fellow faithful Mormons in just a minute. I'd like to go over uh, some ones that have been very instrumental in causing uh, many of you to have incorrect thinking and incorrect belief systems about the church, about their history, uh, and how to unsoundly defend the church. Uh, it's apologetics. Apologetics has been one of the greatest tools in destroying the church. It began with um, let's skip to John W. Jack Welsh. Many of you know him in the church as the one who uh, discovered chiasmus, Hebrew chiasmus, in the Egyptian text of the Book of Mormon. I don't know why anybody didn't stop him and say, John, no, no, shut up, don't, no, no, John, don't do it. <laughs> but nobody did, and now his son, of which I feel for, uh, thinks his dad is the greatest Mormon hero. Uh, what John Welsh did uh, was discover um, the plagiarism from the book The Late War. Uh, it's got a longer title, uh, but it's it's everywhere. You just have to Google search it. And Late War and uh, Hebrew Chiasmus with the Book of Mormon will flood your feed. And... Uh, uh, if you even know how to search for the uh, uh, the comparison chart that somebody has meticulously gone through and done, um, sorry Mormons, the Book of Mormon's plagiarized. I've been trying to help you by pointing out that it's been encoded, but you guys refuse to listen to me, don't you? You don't want to hear it from me, you want to hear it from your prophet. Your true prophet who speaks directly to God, with God. And God inspires him as to how to lead and guide this church. And when it is necessary for God's will to be done, it'll be done by the prophet. <laughs> Oops. So, the lion has been roaring and no prophet's been sounding except for us lowly Mormons that you are ignoring. Amos 3.7 Mormons, you know that one, that's your scripture mastery. And so that's that's the one who started it all. Uh, he started his own organization based upon Hebrew chiasmus and an Egyptian uh, translated document, or an e e English translation of an Egyptian claimed document. And so he, he sort of exposed the church uh, in that way and has brought its doom. And so then he came to BYU, got a job because of, of his, uh, his little exposure there that the church was clueless about at the time. And uh, Daniel Peterson was brought in to help out with the organization called Farms was not officially with BYU, but it was uh, just off their campus and uh, house, and uh, they got to use BYU for lectures and stuff, and to the sale of their publications. 
Hugh Nibley was their favorite. Hugh Nibley writes big, thick books, but the only substance from them is a picture that he puts in from an actual Egyptian <laughs> carving or, or papyri. <laughs> Otherwise, nothing is of value in his words. Uh, that yet everybody loves him. Oh, he's the greatest mind ever! Oh, wow! He's the one that uh, the true prophet of the Lord, David O. McKay, uh, gave the papyra that was returned to the Bergamite Church rather than the other Mormon split-offs uh, from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And that opened up a big old bleep storm also as uh, uh, not only did Egyptologists come forward and, and say the Hebrew name Abraham cannot be found on these Egyptian papyra texts. <laughs> I really hope the Egyptologists were having fun with that. Because <laughs> Mormons were like, oh no, what do we do? Hebrew's not on the Egyptian document. <laughs> and, and so, uh, David O. McKay showed how great of a translator he is for the Lord and gave it to Hugh Nibley. You deal with it. I don't know how to do anything with it. <sighs> and so, uh, uh, section 121, Mormons. Many are called, but few are chosen. I did that video today, this morning. Many are called, but few are... F are no, no, let me correct it. Many are called, and... And they are frozen to. That's the title. It's uh, almost as clever as my watch me pull uh, two rocks out of my hat. But, uh, yeah, Daniel Peterson joined Farms and uh, sort of took it over. He was sort of the leader of the group, the leader of the pack. And uh, he was the one that eventually banned me from us communicating with Farms. They did not like me when I defended Joseph Smith. Neither did the church, for that matter, as uh, F. Michael Watson usurped President Gordon B. Hinckley's authority and tried to have me excommunicated. He failed, <laughs> but uh, they still blacklisted me. Uh, so Daniel Peterson is the one uh, who was big on uh, exposing the church's plagiarism in the Book of Mormon for the 1769 King James Version of the Bible. So that's his major contribution. As well as other uh, defenses of, uh, of the church battling with the Tanners. Then some other ones you are not familiar with. Uh, we have uh, Vincent Kuhn. Uh, he uh, used to be friends with me uh, until they decided they didn't like it that I was making uh, discoveries in church history and going against the prophets. We were supposed to be a Mormon group uh, dedicated to scientific study and research uh, to combat the Mormon apologetics groups. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get off the ground. Sort of helps if you have a, a major backer for your funding. Uh, but uh, then uh, the, uh, the fair Mormon uh, lured in uh, his cousin, Ed Goebel, uh, to uh, say that they'll publish his article uh, uh, on uh, the quid pro quo of, of 
not uh, going against them. And so, of course, oh, publish my article, great. That's more important than scientific truth. And so the group was disbanded, and Vincent went with it, as well as the others. Uh, Vincent, though, uh, has done great research as a faithful Mormon in uh, discovering the actual lands outlined in the Book of Mormon. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's right there in the Michigan area. He's proven it. He went out there himself. He did all the measurements by walking and all that stuff. He did the, he did the work and for the research and published a book on it and uh, Choice Above All Other Lands. And uh, I, again, I proved that the Book of Mormon was plagiarized again, this time with the book uh, of uh, Solomon Spaulding's manuscript found. And that was a fiction of his that never got published and he died and Sidney Rigdon picked it up. And so go to my uh, videos and books and <coughs> you can still see some of my um, blogs on my website. Uh, my website uh, destroyed my my pursuit on that. The day after I submit my lawsuit against the church, by the way. Very interesting, the timing. So, anyway, that's uh, Vincent Kuhn's contribution. And then we have another person you may not know. Uh, you may have come across his lectures on YouTube. He published the book written by the finger of God. Uh, Joe Sampson uh, has uh, proven that the Book of Mormon has also plagiarized Jewish mystical uh, texts and and uh, and techniques. Great book. He shows the plagiarism, and he faithful Mormon doesn't realize he's proven the church liars. And so it's a great book if you want to learn Jewish mysticism too, by the way. And it goes over the different techniques of keraton, uh, gematria, uh, uh, and uh, Tamara, along with the Tree of Life, uh, which was Joseph Smith Sr.'s dreams but not by coincidence. He himself had learned Jewish mysticism. That's where the plagiarism comes from, is from Smith Sr., not Jr. So that's the major uh, contributors from apologetics. Uh, and so on. Then we get to my case. And so, uh, uh, yes, F. Michael Watson, as I've previously discussed, uh, helped with this, because all of this built on top of each other. And the reason why is uh, a criminal organization uh, can now be taken down since the 70s when the, the federal law was created called RICO. Uh, and it's racketeering something something. Uh, it's how to take down a criminal organization because criminal organizations have an organized structure a chain of command and the way they were able to uh, take down uh, Al Capone for example uh, and the organization he was involved in uh, tax fraud for example but uh, uh, you can take down the whole organization by finding the associates or soldiers as they're called. Uh, if they commit a crime and you know that they're a part of the organization, you can take down the whole organization. The organization has to keep their people in line. This is where you come in, Mormons. You're soldiers if you're members of the church. If you are uh, uh, not directly 
uh, in leadership or in uh, the priesthood, uh, you get to also contribute as uh, associates, such as the federal judges. But uh, the secretary was what F. Michael Watson was, uh, and he was put back into the, the Quorum of Seventy on, under Monson. And so he, be, he became uh, uh, a uh, soldier at that point. Uh, so I guess he was a soldier the whole time, basically. Uh, and so uh, the federal judges, Benson and Kimball, when I was you know, trying to get my kids back because of uh, certain uh, bishops, Lester the child molester, Nielsen, uh, out there in Riverton with my parents who are also associates and uh, the uh, woman formerly called my wife's wife and her parents and, and uh, my siblings they're all associates because they all helped uh, um, take away my kids and my property and my research on Paleo Hebrew which I was blacklisted for and uh, banned from farms for, and uh, uh, all play a part. They all committed crimes against me uh, in the name of the organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Corporation of the President. And uh, it all stacked on top of each other throughout these past decades. And, uh, and so Judge Kimball and Benson were a part of the lawsuit I tried to get my kids back for. And uh, I was banned from filing a lawsuit to get my kids back. And uh, then steps in associate, who's also a Mormon, Mark Shirtliff. So he's an associate and a soldier for the church. As a Melchizedek priesthood holder. Uh, and uh, he... Uh, punished me, you know, solidifying the, the foreign land divorce on an American citizen and uh, denying me because I the judges said you can't sue to get your kids back so how am I going to get my kids back? You know, I'm supposed to get help from the prosecuting attorney and of course he decided to turn on me and support a Canadian instead and uh, he kept denying it in the hearing. No, I'm not on her side. <laughs> yes, you are. You're representing her if you're... F <laughs> he's like, does he think I'm dumb? And, uh, and, and so that wasn't all. He still got the Utah legislature, all associates, and as Mormons in the Melchizedek priesthood, as soldiers, uh, created laws... Uh, to attack me uh, because of uh, the divorce which was now official by the Utah government and, uh, and, I, and see how it just builds and so uh, knowing that they were out to get me to destroy me because they were keeping me from having a job uh, and if you don't have a job, you can't make money, you can't buy things, you can't survive. They were trying to destroy me, financially. And so, realizing that they were trying to murder me this way, through the legal process, I, I, I submitted, uh, I turned a book that I had been writing into a petition. Uh, it was titled, Modern American Utopia you recall Thomas More's Utopia and uh, that was what uh, it was all about is that Utah government specifically though I also included Bush uh, were uh, through their laws uh, or the execution of the laws or the judging of the laws were uh, were creating a culture of corruption because in order for me to survive I would have to commit crimes and uh, 
I didn't want to commit crimes. And so I uh, filed the petition with the Capitol building where you're supposed to uh, for uh, uh, assistance from the governor and the attorney general. And they both occupy the state capitol. So I gave them a copy of it. And then uh, the church administration building, though they didn't want to put the administration building, because they tried as hard as they could to separate that they were filing the lawsuit against me uh, on behalf of the church. Uh, they failed miserably. Uh, but uh, uh, then also the Matheson Courthouse, the state courthouse, because that's where you file also. And, uh, and, and thus, like I said, I was arrested as a terrorist. Now if you're Mormon, you know all about Abinadi, don't you? What was Abinadi arrested for? Threatening the king. And they also claimed that he was mad. Guess what they do in Utah to people who they don't like? I'll give you a hint, they did it to Brian David Mitchell until Orrin Hatch stepped in to uh, make sure that uh, Brian David Mitchell gets punished. Uh, the state wanted to remove him from society completely so that he's never heard from again uh, by putting him in the state hospital. So they, they uh, forced evaluators to create a diagnosis of he's uh, completely insane and therefore has to be housed forever in the state hospital. And uh, the federal government stepped in and said, no, oh, he's magically cured. Put him on trial, and away in prison he is right now. Uh, that's how it works. It's all a fraud, but uh, that's what they did to me, too. Uh, they got Nancy B. Cohn as the associate uh, to help the church have me disappear for the rest of my life. But wait, I'm free now, aren't I? That's right, I got out supposed to get out and so as a result other people get added to the list uh, of associates protecting and defending the church and so uh, Bishop Reed Hammond uh, is a part of this he didn't like it that I was doing ancient research only a prophet can do ancient research and uh, I had gotten married and uh, her sister, Joyce, did not like it, uh, did not like me, there was something wrong about me, and uh, she uh, got uh, my wife to divorce me, and uh, I worked with the bishop and with the people in charge of the house, well, not yeah, the people in charge of the housing and the people in charge of, of uh, the mental care, because remember, and they tried to lock me up forever with a fake diagnosis and even an internationally banned one at that for me. <laughs> Stanley Stith Stevens is the Mormon responsible for the destruction of the church as a Mormon who uh, created the whole dichotomy, non-dichotomy categorization which is used in psychiatry and is used to destroy America not just Utah and the Mormon church. So, see how influential Mormons are, guys? Isn't this great? And, uh, and so, uh, with uh, the little conspiracy against me f in this place, uh, they needed some enforcement to help make it happen. And so, they called upon Mayor Ron Bigelow of West Valley City. And uh, Mayor Ron Bigelow uh, uh, hired... Uh, Officer Natalie Johansson to lead a, uh, a department where all of the complaints that I was making of the crimes committed against me are sent to her and she dismisses them. So none of my complaints. I can't call 911 anymore. I'm completely vulnerable. And 
the last couple of weeks I've been hearing gunshots outside. <laughs> I'm, it's not uh, car exhaust explosions, uh, gunshots. So, yay. There was an event down the road uh, where I'm, they were using fireworks. Uh, they must have gotten permission to use them because you're not supposed to use them outside of the two holidays, the 4th and the 24th. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, and so uh, I am no longer allowed to call for help. Uh, if I see somebody robbing one of my neighbor's homes, I can't call the cops because they won't respond to me. Uh, so, sorry neighbors. I, even though I was your neighborhood watch president and I still look out for you, I can't do anything about it now. So, uh, I've witnessed a number of suspicious activity that I can report on and follow up on to make sure if that's what it was. But, sorry guys. You can blame your mayor <coughs> as an associate for the church because of the bishop directing the whole operation uh, through Joyce and all that. So, uh, yeah, all associates for the church. And they were the cause of my finally saying, okay, I need to file this lawsuit, do it under RICO because these guys, I've figured out the connection between all of the groups against me here and uh, and so I'm able to take it against the church as a RICO case because the soldiers and associates are the cause and they work for the church on behalf of the church uh, because the bishop that's the connection with the mayor as well and uh, I can take down the whole organization because of their criminal actions against me. Uh, but it, like I said, we had previous judges and a Utah Attorney General and Governor John Huntsman and F. Michael Watson and Bishop Lester the Child Molester Nielsen. Uh, I, I always call them that to uh, uh, let people know of uh, how sexually repressed Mormons are here in Utah because of their abstinence teaching it's forbidden even though God ordained it <laughs> not raping kids though um, but, uh, there's a paranoia about flesh and, and uh, the act of creation uh, and, uh, I should do a video on that but Anyway, uh, and so I uh, pursued with the lawsuit, and uh, uh, I needed to make sure uh, that it got put with the judge for Gaddy versus the church, uh, with uh, uh, Kay Burningham uh, as the lawyer. Uh, I haven't checked on them lately, I don't know how they're doing. Um, but uh, that's why I, I filed why I did what I did. If you go to the, the court filing, you'll see unusual behavior in the beginning until the hearing on the 1st of November. And uh, uh, it turns out that the judge had been fired. Uh, and I didn't find out until after. And, uh, and so uh, she's refusing to reply. I've submitted the form correctly as she requested in the hearing. Uh, she was going to dismiss my case because they're corrupt. They're all compromised by the church, so they're protecting and defending the church. And the reason uh, was is remember Nancy B. Cohen, the associate for the church that created the internationally banned diagnosis she was getting paid by the church and so that's what saved my case when I told uh, judge first uh, the church is paying this person still and uh, so yeah I was allowed to refile and I did and she's refusing to respond I can't serve the church uh, and until they, she gives permission and gives the order uh, 
knowing that I filed in former pauperous, because that's part of the punishment for uh, 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 the fake diagnosis, and uh, uh, is you have to live on disability, and it's, it's not Social Security. I paid into it because I used to work. Never had a mental history of any kind. That's sort of what caused them grief when I first got arrested. They were under the impression that somewhere uh, I have a, a history and therefore they can just use that against me. Didn't have a history, so they had to create one. And, uh, and, and so because the judge refused to reply, I filed the second motion for service of process. She still refused to reply, so I filed a, a recusal because I found out by then, hey, she got fired. She was removed from Gaddy uh, VCOP and didn't bother to inform me. She's compromised. This whole case is compromised. And so I called for hers and Mormon boy Judge Waddups, who's the, the overseer of the case, and called for their recusal. And I quoted Temple text and, uh, uh, and pointed out the, uh, the second motion where I pointed out that the church tried to cover up after my hearing on the first with Judge First that they'd been paying Nancy B. Cohn. And, uh, oops. So you see how faithful Mormons get the church in trouble when they protect and defend the church? You can't protect and defend corruption, guys. It's that simple. And so because uh, Judge First and Judge Waddups refused to reply to the recusal, I then filed a motion for summary judgment. And uh, I won. They refused to reply, which means they concede. And, uh, and so I filed the summary judgment, pointing out their concession, having taken, on behalf of the defense team's uh, lawyers, they took it upon themselves to be the defense lawyers, uh, because they refused to reply and respond and thus conceded. And uh, that's how I won. I followed federal law to do it. And... Uh, and now they're still refusing to reply to the summary judgment. They have until Friday the 31st, so two more days at midnight. Uh, the clerk has been uh, actively trying to uh, mess with the docket so that we can't tell afternoon time every day whether uh, something gets filed or not. We have to wait till the next morning. <laughs> And uh, he's been making some errors, which is going to get him in trouble. Uh, but uh, like I said, I'll be going in Monday uh, when they refuse to reply because they've already been exposed themselves as corrupt and, and associates for the church. And Waddups especially is not only an associate, but he's also a soldier as a Mormon Melchizedek priesthood owner. And so, uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'll go in Monday to take care of that uh, matter, and uh, it'll be on the official docket. There's nothing the clerk can do, because he has to comply. It's the federal law. <laughs> it's his job. So even though he may be a Mormon as well, as he's uh, trying to protect the church as well, uh, the church lost. It's over. And my request for relief because it's a civil action, not a criminal one. They can't go to prison. Uh, it's up to the Mormons in the, the judicial system uh, to, uh, or in the executive uh, positions for prosecution uh, to uh, make the arrest uh, based on my winning of the case. Uh, they're not likely to do it, but the church should be destroyed because I'll be taking everything from them. I gave two options for the judge to choose, uh, but uh, 
because I really don't want the money, but uh, uh, I am well aware of what the actual doctrine is. I've got a playlist for uh, uh, correct Mormonism where I put in faith. I don't think I've done anything else yet. I want to do spirit, as I talked about in another video, but I haven't gotten to that yet either. Uh, but uh, the doctrine of Joseph Smith uh, and the Book of Mormon, and it's not really Joseph Smith. <laughs> the Joseph Smith Sr., Oliver Cowdery, Sidney Rigdon, um, the, the Trinity <laughs> for Mormonism. <laughs> uh, the doctrine is completely different from the way it's practiced and taught. Uh, and I've been fighting uh, with Mormons, <laughs> not literally, but uh, trying to get Mormons to think differently, and they just won't. And their hearts are stuck on the new doctrine as it's morphed into. And so uh, that's that's how you guys have destroyed the church that's why the church has uh, finally reported that they have less membership now um, it's collapsing all of us who have uh, left the church but didn't sign our uh, resignation letters uh, it's now catching up with the church as our kids are not getting baptized and thus the drop in numbers. The church is collapsing and uh, they lost the lawsuit that is going to strip them of everything and uh, should get them um, charged with criminal RICO case violations as well as treason and war crimes and, and bigamy and, and uh, hate crimes and <laughs> They did all sorts of stuff to me that I was able to put in there. And uh, that's how you guys did it. You destroyed the Mormon church because you failed to actually investigate the church. You were born and raised in it and didn't do a thing with it. You took it for granted and you covered for them and now it's destroyed it's on its way down the planes have hit the buildings and the, the explosives are going off level by level it's collapsing didn't you know that? BYU professor, Mormon came out and said no, there's no way the planes could have downed the buildings there had to have been explosives to bring it down especially the way it came down as fast as it came down who are you going to believe, Mormons? The federal government or one of your own from BYU? <laughs> All the conundrums you face. <laughs> and so watch Mitt Romney and Mike Lee. I already heard Mike Lee's question today. What a jerk. <sighs> the GOP are trying to justify keeping Trump in power. And when they do that, America is transformed into a monarchy. If Mike Lee and Mitt Romney do not vote, uh, uh, if they vote to keep Trump in power so that they acquit him, pay attention to the vote. They're the Mormons. They know the Book of Mormon. They know about the King Men. They know about the warning to America. Let's see how where their loyalties lie. You won't find out. Because uh, all the Republican Mormons in the House, yeah, it was a unanimous GOP vote. Guess what? So it's not looking good for Mitt and Mike. Oh well, consequences. Isn't there a song and primary about consequences? <laughs>